Hi all, my name's Dion Rosenita. I'm the Cummins South Pacific Service Engineer for our Northern Region. And it's a shame given the current circumstances that I'm not able to deliver this session in person. However, I trust that you're enjoying all the TMC content, uh, whether that's from your workshop, your office, or uh, like myself, um, in the comfort of your own home. Today I'm going to discuss uh, turbocharger wastegates. Um, it's a topic that we've covered off uh, on a previous TMC session going back a few years ago. However, I'm hopefully uh, going to provide some further understanding to the process, um, some specific tooling, uh, and also why turbocharger wastegates are becoming more and more crucial in the efficiency and uh, also the reliability of today's engines. The role of the turbocharger wastegate is to control the speed of the turbocharger, therefore controlling the charge air delivery into the engine. This is the case whether it's an electronic or air controlled actuator like what I have behind me. An incorrect setting of the wastegate not only impacts the charge air delivery, but results in an increase in cylinder temperatures, poor performance and a reduction in fuel economy, none of which are good for the engine or generally efficient. With today's engines having such enhanced fuel systems and fine emissions control, the engines are becoming more and more sensitive to variance in the wastegate setting, making the correct setting practices even more important. Today I'm going to go through the checking procedure and tooling for our X15 E5 turbocharger wastegate. The specifications and procedure will vary slightly depending on models, however the fundamentals really remain the same. The full procedure and specifications are found in QuickServe Online and I urge you to reach out to your local Cummins representative to obtain some access. We do have limited owner plans which are available at no cost. Just for a reminder, we are dealing with some sharp components um, and again air pressure. So ensure that you're taking all the safety precautions and using suitable PPE. So let's get into it. To start off, let's have a look at the tooling. You'll notice on the bench here, we've got some uh, a bit of a mix from traditional kind of general tooling uh, to also some more specific tooling uh, for this task. So for the general tooling, we've got a, uh, a traditional style uh, dial indicator, this one measuring to the thousandth of an inch. Um, we've got a air regulator with a tap here, which we'll use to apply the air pressure to the uh, actuator itself. Um, but we've got some more uh, specific tooling, one being the Cummins uh, X15 E5 uh, mag base for the dial indicator. Now when we get into the uh, setting of this or the checking uh, procedure of this, you'll see why this uh, becomes so uh, helpful in the process and, uh, and why it's a, it's a good tool to have. Without this tool, there is an option to utilize a, a traditional mag base uh, dial indicator uh, configuration. Um, but once again, uh, it's certainly uh, a nice tool to have. When it comes to measuring our air pressure, um, I guess uh, something that we come across quite often is, uh, is people utilizing a manual uh, gauge uh, to measuring that air pressure. What we found is traditionally those gauges are kept in a cupboard, uh, loose, um, get bumped around, and uh, and it's quite common to see those mechanical gauges reading out of specification and uh, and not giving you a, a true accurate reading of the air pressure that's being applied. So what we recommend uh, when carrying out the setting of these uh, procedures and um, and generally uh, for any a procedure where we're requiring to measure uh, very fine air pressures uh, or vacuums is the use of a uh, pressure transducer and uh, and this is a Cummins, uh, Cummins tool and it's utilized in conjunction with a uh, a multimeter. Now once again this being a Cummins multimeter, Cummins branded multimeter However, um, they can be utilised with a traditional fluke style multimeter as well. The reason why we utilise these is that it has very, very fine uh, tolerances, very uh, fine uh, reading capability, uh, which is crucial when we're dealing with, uh, with wastegates. One important step when you're utilising a pressure transducer and multimeter configuration is ensuring that we've zeroed out the sensor. 
Now this one, you'll notice I'm utilizing a, uh, a CompuCheck fitting, which when it's resting here like this, it's actually uh, sealing off the sensor and not exposing it to atmospheric conditions. To zero this uh, and to make sure that all our readings are accurate, I'm just utilizing a, uh, a, a dummy fitting um, and when applied to the uh, CompuCheck fitting, it exposes the sensor to atmospheric conditions and then we can go ahead and adjust the uh, pressure transducer to, uh, to zero it. You'll see here on the multimeter, I've, uh, I've zeroed this out. We're exposed to atmospheric conditions and, uh, and now this is ready to use. So here we have all the components and uh, and tooling set up ready to go. I've got my QuickServe Online procedure there, which gives us a step-by-step -step process uh, in uh, setting or checking and setting this wastegate. We've got our pressure transducer uh, zeroed out with no air pressure applied. Got our regulator that's going to uh, feed air pressure to our canister. And then we've got our dial indicator there firmly mounted and, uh, and reading on this wastegate rod. You'll see here the uh, the use of this this mag base uh, dial indicator holder. Uh, you can see why it's uh, it's certainly handy to have. If we were to utilise a uh, a traditional mag base like this one here, you can see there that it's uh, it's quite bulky and uh, and certainly provides its challenges, especially if you're uh, checking travel uh, with the turbocharger still on the vehicle. So this particular turbocharger has a setting pressure of 31 psi and a travel specification of 38 thousandths of an inch to 80 thousandths of an inch. Um, before we go and check the, uh, check the travel of this, it's uh, very important to cycle the actuator through its travel range uh, two or three times to make sure that we're getting a nice smooth motion of the rod and, uh, and we're not kind of hanging up or, uh, or, or sticking anywhere. It's also important that while we're doing this, we don't exceed the uh, maximum capability of the actuator canister being 43 PSI. Um, that may lead to, to ruptures or, uh, or damage to the actuator itself. So I'll go ahead and apply, the, uh, apply some pressure to the actuator and, uh, and you'll see here with the, uh, with the dial indicator that, that we're moving it through, through the sweep. Again, careful that we're not exceeding the uh, 43 psi capability of the actuator. So that would be one. So I'll do another one now. Now once we've done that, we're needing to make sure that our, uh, our dial indicator is returning back to zero and that our uh, pressure transducer is also returned to zero. So with the tooling all zeroed out and we've confirmed that we've got a nice smooth motion of the uh, wastegate rod, uh, we can go ahead and, uh, and apply that 31 psi of air pressure and check our, uh, our travel reading on the wastegate. Now, what uh, it's important to notice is that uh, as I'm increasing the air pressure, you'll see that our travel is not uh, linear. Um, you'll see that it will uh, start off reasonably slow. And as I'm uh, creeping up to that 31 PSI of uh, checking pressure, it will ramp up relatively quickly. quickly. So it's uh, very important that we take it very easy and very slow uh, in one kind of continuous motion up to 31 PSI. Uh, to ensure that we're uh, not exceeding that and uh, and therefore obtaining an incorrect reading. So I'll go ahead now and uh, and with all the tooling zeroed out, we'll apply this air pressure. We're at 10 PSI. 20 PSI. We're at 30 PSI now and I'll take a very, very easy uh, to creep up to 31 psi. So we're at 31 psi there on the dot, and uh, and we if we look at our travel here, we're uh, receiving 59 and a half thousandths of an inch of travel, which uh, the actual nominal specification for this uh, model of wastegate uh, is 59 uh, thousandths of an inch. So. 
Um, obviously, uh, the plan have done uh, an extremely good job of setting up this actuator, um, and uh, and this is good to go in the engine. We don't require the checking of uh, of new and uh, and recon turbochargers out of the box prior to installation. As you can see here, um, we've got uh, very very fine control over the setting of this wastegate from uh, from production. Um, you would typically only implement this practice uh, if you were wanting to make sure that we're, uh, you're maximising your, your fuel economy and your durability of the turbocharger, whether you do that uh, periodically throughout the life of the turbocharger, or if you're experiencing some sort of performance or, uh, or, or fuel economy complaint that you would go in there and you would ensure that, uh, that this is optimised um, to maximise your efficiency. Um, I hope this has really, uh, I guess, provided some uh, some further understanding of why it's important to carry out this practice. Um, you know, with with the correct tooling, calibrated tooling, and uh, and, and following the correct procedure. Um, it's something that if your workshops are, are already doing this, um, it's uh, it's certainly worthwhile to to circle back and revisit the practice that they are doing, um, making sure that they are obtaining some good, uh, accurate measurements. As, uh, as sometimes we've found in, in the field that uh, if we're not utilising correct uh, calibrated tooling, um, you can be doing some more harm than good uh, in checking these. And obviously if you're uh, not gaining accurate uh, you know, measurements, um, you could be uh, potentially uh, adjusting it out of specification. If you were to adjust a, a turbocharger, um, say if uh, if this came in for a performance complaint or a fuel economy complaint, and we found that the adjustment was out, it's simply a case of uh, of loosening the adjuster uh, nut here, uh, taking the link end off the shaft to ensure that we're not breaking that pin. Uh, that pin can break uh, relatively easy if you put some uh, pressure on this rod, and uh, and then a, either a shortening or lengthening that rod to. Uh, to get the required uh, the required travel, um, as I mentioned before, uh, 59,000 thousandth of an inch at uh, 31 psi is our nominal pressure uh, for this turbocharger, this particular model on the X15 E5. And uh, and if we were to adjust this, if we were to find it out of specification and wanting to adjust it back, um, we would be aiming for that uh, that nominal specification. I really hope that uh, that you've got a lot out of this session. Um, it's uh, it's been good to uh, I guess uh, share my uh, my shed here at home, and uh, and hopefully you guys have learnt something. Uh, enjoy the rest of the TMC. Um, certainly reach out to your local Cummins representative uh, if you've got any further questions, and uh, and uh, look after yourselves. Thank you. Enjoy.